How's it going guys, you're watching Rowdy XSE and today is the day where I finally get to assemble the MO RA3 radiator. So let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the components really quick and what we're gonna be installing. So we've got the um, adapter plate for the 200 mm fans from Watercool. Um, they're gonna be mounted with the NF A20 Noctua fans. We've got a dual D5 setup um, uh, on a custom bracket that I had to make because the one that comes from Watercool, which you can normally use to the reservoir, wasn't quite big enough. So we've got a custom one for that. Um, I've got a Baratech um, inline temperature sensor. Uh, quick disconnect because I'm going to do something quite cool to make it nice and easy, but obviously you'll see that as the video goes on. We'll go into more detail. Uh, some hard tube fittings, some soft tubing, um, and some soft tube fittings. So yeah. So first of all, we're going to start with mounting the Noctua fans to the 200 mm bracket. It is easier to do it, well, it's almost impossible <laughs> to do it while it's on there because you have to um, thread the bolts through the fan and then they're held on with a nut, a small nut on the back. Um, so obviously if you had an intention of fitting this first, that's not going to work out very well, so you have to do it this way around. Um, so I'm going to just kind of do this and then probably, uh, I don't know, either fast forward this or just put some music over it or something because, um, yeah, I'm probably going to be putting some weird faces and breathing heavy and looking weird. So, um, yeah, we'll crack on with that and then next job will be mounting the res and the pumps. So, yeah, I'll get cracking with that. I'm missing one nut and it's um, it's one of these small ones and I think these are like either M, these are M2 or M3 and I don't have a spare one. So I'm gonna have to just run three, um, three bolts and nuts through one of the fans for now and then I'll have to get some of those and readdress that down the line. It's not into the world, it's very much on there. So, oh well, I'm, I'm sure it's probably me that's lost it to be honest with you, because they're really fiddly so. I don't know, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go on, get all these tightened down properly, and then we'll mount that to the radiator. Right, so with the fans mounted to the adapter, it's now time to get that installed onto the radiator. So, oh, find it easier to lay this one down, I think. I was gutted, by the way. So, on the video that I made about the um, MORO3, I thought I was really lucky and there was no dings or anything. And then I noticed like a couple of days later, there was a ding down here, a quite a nasty one as well. The core is fine. Um, but obviously the, the shroud is bent quite bad. With the adapter plate and everything else, I'm not gonna notice it too much. And to be honest with you, like this is not, this is not gonna be a showpiece for me. Like this is a, I just want this basically for the functionality. If this was something that I was using at home, um, pretty much any of the circumstances, I would probably, you know, want a new one, but I was just kind of like, whatever. Like I didn't want to send it back. I just wanted to crack on. Um, but yeah, so I was pretty devoted, but I went back and watched the video because I was like, sure, I, I thought I had done it. And then I noticed as I was taking it out of the box in the video, you could see the ding. So It happened, so do make sure if you get one of these, just check it over thoroughly because the box was pressed in. The box was fine, which I was, I was sure I was like, had no issues, but definitely just double check everything and don't fall into the same trap I did. Um, because it is a bit getting, to be fair, but it's okay. So... Um, this literally fits over the top. 
fairly easy to line up. We'll centre the shot. Okay, we'll make sure these are down. So we've got various different mounting points around the shroud. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mounting holes, it looks like. Yep, so it's just the top and the bottom, no mountains on the side. So again, I'll fast forward this one and uh, we'll move on to the res and the pumps. Okay, so fans are installed, fairly simple. Obviously the screws are really small and fiddly, so just be really careful not to lose them. I've already lost one, so yeah, you've gotta be careful with that. Um, now the res is relatively simple. Obviously the bracket, if you wanna mount it to the uh, radiator itself, you can buy this. Um, well, if you're in the UK, easiest place is gonna be aqua tuning. Um, because I don't think many UK outlets uh, stock it, but this came really quick and I'm like, I think it was about, I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't that expensive. Um, now, in true rowdy fashion, this is going to be a little bit janky. So, in order for me to be, for to be able, to, my mom. <laughs> in, in order for me to be able to fit the res um, and the pumps together, I'm going to have to mount this sort of here, but I'm only going to get use of the one screw hole. But the way this is designed has actually worked very nicely in my favour because it's lipped. When you've got two in there, and that'll be enough to hold the weight of this, um, it won't fall back. So it'll actually hold that fairly secure. And then on the pumps, um, for the bracket for this, I had to use one of the additional um, bolt holes that would have been used for this because this normally sits centre, but obviously I'm using it up higher. Um, and I've had to tap. Um, one of the bottom holes, which they're just a hole. There's no thread there, and obviously you can't get in there to put a nut behind it. So I tapped that to an M4, um, so I can actually utilize that as a um, fixing, which, because this, I could not have done this just on one bolt. So obviously th this, this very much needed two. So it's basically making use of the one M3 and then tap that up to an M4. And obviously, technically this should work, but uh, we'll find out, won't we? It's either gonna, and it's either gonna look great and I've, and I've proper, you know, done what I wanted to achieve, or it's gonna completely fall apart and I'm gonna like a right fool. But that's all part of the process for me. So yeah, we'll get cracking with the res, then move on to the pumps. After that, we're gonna get some plumbing done, get it mounted to the wall, and uh, yeah, route the quick disconnects, and hopefully uh, it fills up with no leaks and happy days. So yeah. Right, so fans are mounted, reservoirs mounted, and the pumps are mounted. All I've got to do now is plumb in the hard tubing. Um, all I'm gonna be routing is, so I'm gonna have hard tubing coming up from the res to the rad. Uh, temperature sensor is gonna go in between. Um, and then obviously gonna run um, one hard tubing out of the reservoir to the first pump, run them in tandem, down to the second pump, and then the outlets will be for soft tubing, just for ease of access. I'm gonna do the bulk of that off camera, uh, just because hard tubing can be a bit of a pain and it's quite hard to film. So 
if this was a build, I'd definitely include it, but for this, it's, it's pretty simple stuff. So um, I'll only show you what is really necessary. Um, but yeah, so once that's done, we'll get it mounted to the wall and uh, we'll get it bled up and see if, uh, if it's a winner or not. Okay, so hard tubing's installed. Really happy with the way it turned out. Um, wasn't too bad to do. A uh, bit finicky with a couple of the tight corners, but it came out pretty decent. Um, so just give you a quick rundown of exactly the routing of this once more. So we've got obviously the reservoir, comes out of the reservoir into the first pump, then in tandem to the second pump, that's our pressure, and then our inlet comes back in through the radiator, obviously once it's been for our components, back into the radiator, up to the top, cooling down, and then through the temperature sensor, back into the rest. So yeah, pretty cool, dead happy with it. Um, obviously now I've just got to hope that there's no leaks and uh, my workmanship is at least half decent at this point. Um, so yeah, I will get that wall mounted and we'll see you very soon. Okay, so it's finally installed on the wall. It took way longer than what it should have done. Um, for you, this will be like a second. For me, this felt like a lifetime. I'm hot, sweaty, I feel filthy now, and yeah, I'm dying inside, but we will prevail. So what I've got to do now, last job is I need to plumb it from the radiator to so the inlet and outlet and to run it behind the toolbox. I'm going to run it underneath the desk and then I have two quick dis disconnect fittings here that will stay permanently here. So as I want to use the radiator, I can either use it on the test bench or I can use it on a rig that I'm doing on the desk. The quick disconnects that we're fitting are Barrow. These are a really good price. These are like uh, $18.99 each, which in comparison to most are decent and are metal. So these should work superbly. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, Draw some holes, get some plumbing done, fill it up with water, blade the system, and hopefully I'm not going to have to pull it all apart because it's a leak or something stupid. Right guys, so quick disconnects are fitted. Very simply, it's a pass-through fitting which goes into a long spacer fitting into a 16mm fitting. On the top, we've got a small male-to-male -male fitting that goes into the male part of the Baratek quick disconnect. Um, you will need male-to-male -male if you're gonna go from pass-through to fitting purely because they are obviously female. Um, now, traditionally, we would have a system ready to go and plumbed so you'd have your loop. We don't have that. Because it's a standalone unit, and obviously it's on quick disconnects, um, we're gonna need to use one long piece of hose which will then give us our loop. So, quite simply, like that. Um, the reason it's so long is mainly because this stuff's expensive and I didn't want to waste any. So I've actually cut a length off that I can actually use from here to the desk. So if I'm using the system on the desk, I can very easily do so. And if I'm putting anything on the test bed, it's still very easy to do so. Um, the fluid that we're going to be using today is none other than automotive screen wash. Now, the reason behind this is because the environment that I'm in, there is no heating whatsoever, and it can get extremely cold in the winter, and I've got every real risk of this freezing up, which wouldn't be good. So the properties of this compared to antifreeze, obviously uh, most of you would probably be asking, why don't you just use antifreeze? The reason for that is a lot more that goes into antifreeze, which I don't like going through a loop, um, and it's thicker. So the viscosity is quite a bit thicker than screen wash. And if you see that in a loop, you can almost see it looks not gloopy, but like it's, it's you can tell it's a hell of a lot thicker. So this is just much, much easier on the pumps. And I do find uh, you get way more flow using the screen wash. Um, obviously the major benefit that I'm using it for is the fact that if it does go sub-zero, so we start to freeze, this will go down to lower temperatures than what water will. Um, and it's also got biocides in there, so it'll keep the loop nice and clean. I've used it for quite a while in my rig at home um, and I do a lot of chilled overclocking so obviously the loop temperature can get very much down to zero um, and it protects it fine against that so I've got every confidence in it but that's definitely not one that I would recommend you use as it's not its intended use so if you do decide to go for it it's very much at your own use but I've not had any issues as yet. So what we're going to do then is get the loop filled up and hopefully everything is nice and tight and fairly simple and we can end the video on a positive note. So yeah, let's go ahead and get it filled.
Well guys, that is it done, finished and installed. Um, came out far better than what I was expecting, so I'm really excited to use this and see the performance value, especially in comparison to the 360 that I use at home. I will be making more videos down the line on how that scales and if there's any major benefit for going for the 420 as opposed to the 360. Um, so yeah, we'll be excited to see that. If you have any questions at all about the components I've used, um, leave your message below, I'll be happy to get back to you. Um, and yeah, so if you like the video, please like it, subscribe, turn your notifications for more, um, and we'll see you again shortly. Once again, thanks a lot, see you soon.